episode 44, When Silence Becomes the Most Beautiful Sound You've Ever Heard. You're listening to the very best podcast in the world on health, wealth, and happiness. Please remember to leave a review and share with all your friends and family. And here is your host, Lars Hilson. We're not going to be speaking silently or whispering here because uh, we're going to, well, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to talk about silence because um, it, uh, I don't know, it's been quite a few years uh, since I returned from a business trip, yet another one. And as I mentioned to you, I was born and raised in Germany's gorgeous countryside, which is just flat and desolate and economically ruined. But uh, the the place I grew up in was always my home. And so uh, I would always return from, uh, you know, periodically from the trips. Uh, and one of these occasions was where I came in with, uh, with a late flight into Hamburg uh, airport and got out of the plane, uh, you know, did the usual, uh, you know, ran to the, to the uh, rental car counter, uh, took out my car and zip off. I went onto the Autobahn loud, <laughs> yeah, loud, loud music, loud music, um, uh, put in the speedometer at 250, uh, which is what the cars would usually run, drove home, uh, in less than an hour. And there I was. So, you know, you music's still booming, you know, you turn off the ignition and then uh, it's like you open the door and there is actual silence like that. And what you were hearing in the background was the fireplace cracking. So it wasn't exactly silent, but you're, you're getting the point, you know, it's like you come and, and I came in from Dubai at that occasion. And, you know, it's like a hustling, bustling city, like pretty much any place uh, that, um, you know, these metropolises that you get to hang around in and feel important and, you know, that kind of thing, you know, it's like you, it's like a, a collision of worlds, right? Number one, uh, in these places, you can't see jack shit in the night sky because there's so much light pollution going on that you're, you know, you can see the moon, maybe, maybe the 10 brightest stars, but that's just about it. The place I grew up in, you would look up and you could see pretty much the entire Milky Way because the next bigger city was, uh, I don't know, probably 30, 40 kilometers away. Uh, and the biggest light polluter, which would be Hamburg in that case was, you know, close to hundred kilometers away. At least the airport was 99.4 door to door kind of issue. Right. So, um, the beauty and the immaculate kind of scenario that you go into, is just astounding. You know, you, you come from this, uh, place where all of your senses are being bombarded, you've got attention whores and forms of billboards and other sophisticated, you know, algorithms trying to suck you into shops and to purchase stuff you don't need. And, you know, your, your senses are just totally overwhelmed. And, you know, shortly before, uh, or, or, you know, just merely slightly before going tilt, and then you come into this pristine nothingness and you crash. And in fact, you know, on, on so many occasions, I've actually had the experience that I didn't know that, you know, I was sleeping. So you go to bed and you wake up 13, 14 hours later after, you know, an exhausting few months being away. And it's like, you didn't even know you were sleeping because there was just this nothingness right? And it kind of reminds me many years ago, I was in one of these first flotation tanks that 
uh, came out. It was like, you know, this phenomenon of sensory deprivation. If you haven't tried it, go ahead. It's just this awesome feeling that you get of being totally detached from, from anything. You're uh, floating in this, uh, in this solution and there's no noise, no light. You're just in absolute darkness. It's terrifying for some of you. I know, you know, just by telling it, but, uh, once you get over this, uh, this, this, uh, terrifying aspect, it's actually the most, I don't know, peaceful experience I've ever had. And you totally lose the concept of time. Uh, and yeah, it's just like you're left with your brain, with your thought, with your tinnitus, like myself, and you're just free. And it's an, it's an insane, insane, yeah, insane, experience. <laughs> uh, insane experience, right? So that being said, why am I talking to you about something uh, that is in theory so abundantly available? And the truth is that it's not, because if you live anywhere, be it in the city or the burbs or whatever it is, you still have this humming of, you know, even in a small town, you're going to have your occasional car driving by. Again, you know, it's not sound pollution as you have it in, for instance, I don't know, Karachi or Mombasa or, you know, all of these other hell holes. Rio de Janeiro is another one of them. You know, this is, is different, but still your senses are being triggered by noises that happen. And that's the differentiation between actual silence and living out in the burbs or in a quiet city or town setting where you have your car, you have your um, heating systems everywhere. You've got your occasional air conditioner running. Uh, you have, you know, in the distance, you've got police sirens or ambulance sirens or whatever. So it's not, it's never really silent and getting to the point to actually enjoying silence is a totally different story. Now, why in the hell should you actually attempt to do that? Uh, and that's very interesting and a very interesting question of you to ask. Now, silence and having enjoyed it, it is the most beautiful beautiful and pristine experience that you've ever had in your life, right? Uh, in, you know, a lot of you are uh, so much into the city and, and uh, never get out of it. But, you know, just going into nature, uh, you know, going 100 kilometers away from the next city, uh, you know, for some it's not possible because they live so urbanized that, you know, even 100 kilometers is unthinkable. But, you know, give it a shot. And then for a few hours, uh, you know, just be, be in nature, be without sound, be without light, preferably. And that's difficult. I know because the place I live in now, uh, you know, you've got Cologne pretty close. You've got uh, a variety of large cities within a hundred kilometer vicinity, uh, all collectively, emitting so much light pollution that the place I live in now, um, you don't see the Milky Way or you very rarely do. And that is just um, what I wanted to mention. If you can't do that, try to find one of these um, flotation tanks or these sensory deprivation tanks. Most cities have them. You know, you can rent them for hours on end and you know, just go in there, enjoy yourself, and then um, uh, get out, and then you're back in the hustle and bustle. But what I'm trying to say is that you experience a detachment, not only from yourself, but from your surrounding. Uh, and that's really a feeling which is different in nature, if you, you know, want to go back to the, to the silence thing. Uh, because you're, you know, you're floating, you're not really attached to Mother Earth. And, uh, you know, for, for me, this is 
where I live now, there's so much wildlife that, you know, the silence aspect gets killed again because you've always got something chirping or burping or barking or uh, mooing or meowing or uh, I don't know what fox, what does the fox say? <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's like, it's very difficult to find that even here. So you have to find this, you know, kind of um, uh, night inactive area where animals go to bed as well. And uh, then just uh, try that out. It's really an insanely marvelous experience uh, to be just away from everything. You know, leave your cell phone behind or at least turn it off. You know, if you needed to get back to your car or something, by God, you know, take it. Right. But um, uh, if you can just uh, leave that there, uh, don't take a flashlight. Uh, your eyes will fairly quickly adapt to the darkness. Um, and then just, I don't know, sit down without any music or without any noise. It's difficult. I know. Uh, and then just enjoy the silence, enjoy the darkness, and enjoy just being totally detached. You know, take your shoes and socks off, put your feet on the on Mother Earth's uh, beautiful soil, uh, and just enjoy this pristine feeling that you're uh, that that you're getting. And I know I know why it's or I know that it is difficult for some city folks because uh, the Airbnb we run here. Uh, we've occasion we occasionally have guests from the city that say, wow, at night we had to turn the radio on or, you know, listen to a podcast or something because the silence in the house is just um, so unnerving to us that there is no humming or there's no car driving by or there is no um, police sirens or no helicopters flying overhead or no airplane noise or whatever, you know, in this place, uh, if you don't necessarily have the wind in the wrong direction and you've got the freighter aircraft coming in at night, it is dead silent, like really, really dead silent. Once the animals have gone to bed and the wildlife, uh, it's just dead. And so for a lot of you, it's going to be a totally new experience. Um, and I want to encourage you to really put that on your, um, not on your burner plate or on your back burner or whatever it's called, but make it a priority to just, you know, look for a place that intrigues you that is far away from civilization. Make sure you know, you've got enough gas in the tank, right. Uh, to get back. Um, and then try to get away from the cities as far as you can, because the light pollution plays a role in how you perceive nature in total darkness at night. Uh, and um, just, I don't know, sit back, watch the stars. If the weather permits, enjoy the silence. Uh, there's actually a song about that, I think. And just be in touch with nature. And you're going to see that your batteries are going to receive that extra charge, uh, which you otherwise do not get. In that sense, I think enough said about silence. Um, so I will be silent now uh, until tomorrow when we've got Exercise Friday coming up. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm still deciding between, I think it's three episodes uh, and yeah, in that sense, I will surprise you tomorrow. Uh, if you are west of me, I wish you a successful day. Uh, if you are east of me far enough, I wish you a good night and to have had a successful day. And I'm looking forward to hearing you tomorrow for Exercise Friday when uh, we're going to do a probably a pretty cool show. <laughs> so in that sense, good night, folks. Good day and hear you tomorrow. Peace out.